One, two, three, four. Drums. It was the first instrument that I learned to play. I was quite an active child and my parents thought that drumming classes might help. I wasn't very talented, but the passion for percussion remained until this day. So with that in mind, what are we working on today, Lily? Today we're working on the proc drums. They're a virtual analog DSP drum kit, which consists of a bass drum, a snare, a hi-hat, and a clap. These drums are a collaboration between Proc, the software manufacturer, and Thonk, which is the British vendor of DIY synth supplies. The hardware for the Proc drums is the same as for two other modules that can be purchased from Thonk, namely Music Thing Modulars Radio Music and Chord Organ. Both of these modules are basically a cradle to host a teensy within your UR rack. The hardware is open source, that means that it's up to anyone to develop software for it. But the software that was developed for the PROC drums is proprietary. The interface has been completely redesigned. It would be hard to tell for an outsider that this is the same as a radio music or chord organ. The PROC drums just look really sleek and modern, and they're a beautiful addition to our rack. Secondly, these modules have a great diversity of sound. So much of the other drums available in the Euro rack realm are analog clones of the 808 or 909 type drums, and I was never that much into that sound. This, however, is in a world of its own. These drums are really gnarly or really clean, depending on what you want. There's just a great variety of possible sounds. What allows for this great diversity of sound is that within each unit there are four quads, which allow for 16 patches, but that's not where it stops. You actually have a lot more possibility to create a really specific sound because of the morphing function. In preparation for this video, we reached out to Steve from Thong to ask if there was anything special we should mention about these drums. He emphasized that since June 2020, they've updated the software so you can reprogram any of the units onto the other one. For example, you could put the snare on the bass drum and play around with that and specify it to your needs. They also released a new percussion-based bank called Clonk, and that can add even further diversity to your palette of drums. Mm -hmm. I also want to acknowledge that a lot of people say you don't need a dedicated drum synthesizer within your Euro rack, but need and want are worlds apart, and we <laughs> want these drums. Moreover, we're primarily interested in playing the drums rather than in synthesizing the drum sounds. And for that purpose, dedicated drum modules are a huge benefit. Compared to our last project, this should be a breeze because it's all through hole soldering. I think there's just one surface mount part. Okay, well, we can, we can manage with one. I'm kind of looking forward to that. Yeah, okay. I also want to show you the assembly line we put together because there are four drums. We can be working on them in parallel across from each other <laughs> so we can stare longingly into each other's exactly. eyes yeah. and get high on the fumes. <laughs> Lily gets the nice PCB holder and the temperature controlled iron. I get this old crummy thing, but I think we'll give it a final chance to prove its worth. We also want to tell you a little bit about how we put this project together. So we got a partial kit from Vonk and then we ordered the rest of the parts from Mauser. To stay organized, we go through the build guide and write the number of each step on the corresponding part bag here. And we put them all in order so that we have it streamlined for when we actually get to the soldering. I was surprised to find that the structural parts of the project are some of the most expensive, like pin headers and IC sockets. These were cheaply available on AliExpress, however, so we just ordered them all from China. Thank you, China. Other <laughs> countries are available. We're really stoked to get started, so without further ado, let's get to work. Let's do it. So we started off by cleaning the PCBs. Here you see us working on three of the units in batch, and we'll show you a close-up build of one of the units in a moment. The build starts with the front PCB. First we place a 5.6K resistor, then a 39K resistor and three 56K resistors. I like to touch the component legs with one finger when I snap them so they don't jump away. Then we place the two black diodes. Next is the single SMB voltage regulator. 
just solder the big pan. Then heat it up and slide the regulator into place. Then solder the final pads. Next are the IC sockets. I'm soldering one pin vertically here so they don't fall out, then flipping the board and soldering all the remaining pins. But it would have been easier to just place the PCB on the workbench. At this point I should have soldered the two row male headers, but I got to those later, and instead I soldered the 300N capacitors. Here I soldered the four 10UF capacitors. Note that these have to be placed snugly against the board, otherwise they might touch the front PCB and cause a short. Next I soldered the single 150PF capacitor. Now we take out the Teensy and note that we have to cut the trace on the Teensy. I placed it on a sheet of foam rubber to make sure that it didn't get damaged and used a scalp to cut the trace. Then I used a multimeter to make sure that the trace had been successfully cut. Now we assemble the pin header cradle for the Teensy. I just put together the male and female headers inserted them in the board and into the Teensy, and then soldered them in place. Now I come back to the two row pin headers, which I forgot in a previous step. The next step is to insert the ICs. Here goes the TL072 and the MCP6002. Next up is the front board. We start with soldering two 470R resistors. Then a single 100K resistor. Next we place four 1.5K resistors. and a 56k resistor, then a 27k resistor, and now we place the two blue diodes. Note that these are polarized. Then a single 100N capacitor, and now we solder four resistors in a standing position. Starting with the 1.5K, then the 227K and 156K resistor. Next up is the switch. Note that this is also polarized. And we're placing all other interface components. The four jacks, the two pots and the SD card reader. Then we place the front panel and attach it with a few nuts. And we put some scotch tape around the switch and SD socket. Then we solder all parts into place. I have to cut back the scotch tape to solder the SD socket and the switch. Now we take off the front panel and we solder the remaining pin headers which are used for connecting the front and back boards. Don't forget to solder all the points as I did here. 
Make sure the boards fit together. Remove the back PCB. I'm adjusting the 10U capacitors to make sure there's no shorts between the boards. The final step is placing the four LEDs. Put a piece of scotch tape on the front panel and wiggle the LEDs into place. Then solder them. Now they should be beautifully flush with the front panel. Finally, place the knobs and your module is finished. To debug the unit, the first thing we did is check the directionality of all polarized components. On this board that includes the electrolytic capacitors, the ICs, diodes and of course the single voltage regulator. While checking the polarity of these components, we noticed that all of them were positioned correctly on the non-functioning board, but on one of the other boards an electrolytic capacitor was reversed. We were a little dismayed that we did not get to experience the rumored white smoke we read about on the internet. But it seems that this capacitor is still okay, so we're going to just desolder it and reverse it and put it back in place. After checking the polarity of all these components, we measured the values of all resistors on the board. Now it's worth noting that resistors do not necessarily measure the same resistance on the board as they do out of the bag. And the reason for this is that current can sometimes take different paths on the board before it flows through your multimeter. With this board, however, that was not the case. All resistors measured approximately the same value on the board as they should out of the bag. However, we found one resistor on the broken board that registered 0 ohm. And 0 ohm is machine language for you have a short circuit somewhere. But if I look at the soldering on this resistor, it looks in fine working order. So the short might be somewhere downstream of this resistor. Now at this point, it is useful to reference a schematic diagram for the module. On the diagram, you can trace which components are downstream and upstream of the one registering the short. So if you can read that schematic, you'll notice that there are actually very few parts downstream of that resistor. There's only the switch and the pin headers on either side. But the bad news is that we tried to desolder all of those parts and the pads of the resistor still registered a short circuit. We then reached out for help on DIYs and Facebook groups and although help was very forthcoming, nobody was able to find a solution for this problem. The most likely explanation seems to be that we may have inadvertently scratched one of the traces on the PCB and bridged it to ground. However, after desoldering so many components, it's really hard to tell where the PCB has been damaged. I know you were all hoping for a happy ending, but it seems like we won't be able to salvage this PCB. So with that in mind, we're going to dedicate this demo of the proc drums to their fallen comrade. That was our demo of the proc drums with the cheeky cameo of the snares sent to us by our good old Uncle Steve from Thonk.
We saved the day yet again. Steve was kind enough to send us a full replacement kit for the front panel with expedited shipping so we could finish the build in time for this video. So we'd like to review our experience of the proc build ballroom style. There's going to be four categories. Face, how good it looks. Crave, how much we want to use them. Groove, obviously how well they groove. And noob, which is how easy it is for newbies to build it. Can I do a little bit of weirdness? Yeah. Please. Okay. First up is the face category. <laughs> <laughs> that was certainly weird. First up, we'll start with the face category. Ready? Oh, we got the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're on the same. What do you think page. about the appearance? Um, I think it's really aesthetic. It's really clean, but you know, there's always room for a little bit of improvement. What would you change? I mean, I'm dazzled, but I'm not going to take my pants off. I think that covers it. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Next up is the crave category. Our scores. I crave it. I want it. I yeah? love it. Yeah. <laughs> I gave it an eight because we can make drums in other ways. What do you think? Um, I'm completely attached to a really codependent and unhealthy extent at the moment, actually. <laughs> so there's no getting rid of that for me. Okay. Okay. Next category. Okay. The final category is noob. How easy was it to build? Our scores? It was very easy to build. Even though we managed to mess one up. But we're still noobs, so it's okay. It makes sense. I guess an important takeaway is, no matter how easy the build, it could go wrong. So how do you deal with that? The worst case scenario would have been that we would have to replace the whole kit. But there are a lot of different scenarios. For example, you could keep working on it until you fix it and you can find people on the internet who might be willing to help you. If you enjoy the debugging and you can invest the time, this can actually be a very rewarding process. Another solution might be to ask the vendor to sell you a replacement only for the parts that are damaged beyond repair. So you have to accept that some things can go wrong, but usually there's a solution and people in this community are willing to help each other out. Yeah. I would have to say the build guide is extremely clear. There are not too many parts. It's all through hole soldering. You'll be fine if this is your first build. Even the single surface mount part is very easy. Mm -hmm. There's one recommendation in order to even ease the experience for future builders. And that is to put a link to the schematic and the software for the proc drums on the sales page. When we had trouble with our first build, we contacted Steve and he sent us the schematic. And the schematics are actually publicly available on GitHub, but only as an Eagle file. And we don't have Eagle installed on our computer. So it would be much more convenient to just have a PDF handy on the website. And the same goes for the information about the recent update for the proc drums. We received an email about this, but it would be very convenient to just have that information on the sales page as well. I really enjoyed this experience because the four modules allowed for us to work simultaneously and bounce ideas off each other and really just work together in a collaboration. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and join us for more content at channel 37. Our next video we're going to do a very special build which is a remake of our first module ever, the new tone. So please join us for that. See you next time. Bye.